Hello everyone, thank you very much for attending this class. Um, my name is Akira and this is my colleague Megumi and we're talking about the most um, popular ramen in the world today. That's that's tonkotsu ramen and uh, so you know like for you guys today like I've uh, scribbled some notes like on the whiteboard here and then um, you know like we'll, we'll just do like this brief lecture first and then like you know just get into like noodle making Later on, like you know, and then so we've been doing this like online class, you know, that's typically like lasts for like over an hour, and you know, I we thought like it'd be like kind of too long for you guys, for some of you guys. So, you know, we're gonna start doing this like kind of shorter version of it, and then like just kind of focusing on just one thing at a time. And um, I think it's gonna be like um, around like 30 minutes ish. So. Um, I hope you guys are gonna stick around, and we're gonna talk about like tonkotsu noodles, and you know. We're gonna walk you guys through um, exactly well, like everything that you need to know, like to you know make authentic tonkotsu ramen noodles. So um, let's uh, check out this um, whiteboard. Um, so I've written. Um, I, I try my best, like actually, like writing um, this whiteboard. I, I don't normally write uh whiteboard and like uh, i hope like my writing is like not too bad like for you guys to understand like you know what's scribbled on this whiteboard so um so that's like tonkotsu noodle like ramen um you know it's been like the most famous like most popular ramen noodles in the world um it's because like all these uh, ramen shops you know there are a lot of ramen shops in japan and like you know across the world but like actually um, they are not um, big um, ramen chain, ramen shop chains um, in the world, right? And they like, I think the biggest one would be like, would have like maybe like 500 outlets. And uh, but like most of these, um, you know, like bigger, I mean, big like ramen shop chains, um, the, the main offerings are you know, this type of ramen, like tonkotsu ramen. So, um, and it's it's very unique. Like for those of you like who don't know what tonkotsu is, like that's like that's literally means like pork bones, and it's a like creamy, like thick soup. Um, it's cloudy, and it's like very unique soup, right? And then that noodles that we are gonna talk about today, like is actually unique too. Like in that, like it's very thin, and it's like hard, right? It's very thin and hard, and it's got like kind of well, fairly strong uh, wheat flavor because of the um, to low hydration, um, you know, like lower uh, water content ratio. So it's it's very dry and hard noodles, and it's it's probably one of the well, it's like the probably the most unique um, noodles in you know among like different types of ramen noodles. So um, yeah, uh, so it's got like you know I. I have to say first, like, you know, you, there are like three things you need to, you know, uh, to make this type of noodles. So, so first one would be like proper ingredients, which I'm gonna talk about in details in a minute. And recipe, right? Recipe, well, you know, we're actually giving, giving away like just exact recipe that, you know, we're gonna actually make um, today's Class. And then, um, of course, like noodle machine, like you have to have like proper equipment to be able to like make authentic tonkotsu ramen noodles. So first, right, that's ingredients. So um, first of all, like you have to have like also wheat flour and the type of wheat flour, you know, you have to have like maybe um, has like protein content of like 11 to 12 percent. So that's like higher um, in protein content, like which makes the higher the protein content, like you know, the harder the noodle texture, right? So, um, so it's like just a bit below like uh, the bread flour. You, you could use bread flour, but like bread flour may have like high ash content. So you might want to find um, you know wheat flour that has like. You know, protein content like around 11, 12, like in the low in ash content, because you wanna you wanna make it wider in color. And uh, so the gluten, right? Gluten and then gluten powder. It's a gluten powder, and then it's you know you, we we don't you know normally like gluten powder like is not really used for like 
um, different types of, of ramen noodles, but like gluten powder is used for this type of noodle to make it like even harder, right? Even harder and like even like even crunchy kind of texture. So like, you know, we got like this bite when you are, um, you know, biting the noodles and then um, so and the egg white, right? Egg white. So egg white is just white part of the egg and then um, you can use it like in a fresh form or like you can use like powder form like that one we have in Japan. And um, there are two things like we are looking for like when using egg white. So it's it's a hardness, right? But like kind of hardness that like for those people like who have like, you know, eaten the uh, egg, right? Like a boiled egg, boiled egg. And that's the white part of like kind of texture that you, you know, you know beat into like, you know, white, right? And then that's the kind of texture like you like kind of bouncy. Um, you know, but like, you know, be hard texture. And um, the other thing is like egg white kind of works as like, you know, it's not exactly waterproof, but like just, you know, kind of like helps, um, you know, keep, um, you know, hot water, like hot soup, like from like, you know, penetrating into the noodles. So because it's, that, it's thin noodle, so we want to, you know, keep the noodle texture like as long as possible, like in the hot soup. So we use a bit of like egg white. Um, in Kansi, right? Kansi, um, yeah, Kansi, we talk about like it's uh, there are many variations, but like the one we use usually is uh, you know, some nation potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate. Um, but you know, we use the one uh, with like high in potassium carbonate, which makes the noodle texture harder. It's got like build up like this um, smell as well, but um, Kansi with a high potassium carbonate uh, ratio. Um, then water, right? Water, um, you know, it's a, it's a low hydration ratio noodles. So um, the amount of water we use is like it's very small uh, compared to like other types of noodles. So all of these, and then like salt, like we use it to like kind of add salt taste, um, but you know, just an option. Um, then we use like these um, type, these different ingredients to make this kind of hard texture. Like it's all these like you know contribute to the hardness of the noodle uh, texture. So and so the recipe, right? So I'm you know we're giving about giving away this recipe for you guys. And so first like we have a solid, right? Like we only talk about like each of these, but like just percentage of the percentage of these, right? So um uh, so like 98% wheat flour, 1% uh, gluten powder, 1% egg white. Um, we use a powder form, but like if you're using like uh, fresh eggs, right? Just egg, egg white, egg white. Um, you have to like calculate it like in a different different way. Um, you know, it's like because you know like fresh eggs has like you know kind of kind of like liquid part and a solid part to it. So like. Uh, for those of you who want to know the formula, um, you can uh, send us an email and then, you know, we can, uh, you know, send it to you guys. So, and so uh, the total amount, right, like, you know, we, we're using like, we're doing like 4,000 grams, 4 kilograms. And for the liquid, liquid part, right, the liquid part, um, then liquid, okay, like hydration ratio, like it's 28%, 28% of the total solids, right? To the total solids, like so. That's how you calculate. So 0 0.28 times like 4,000. So the total amount is like 1,120 grams of liquid. So inside this liquid, what we have here is that like water, right? 98%. The kansi we talked about, like with the high potassium carbonate, uh, 1.5, and salt just 0.5, just to add the bit of like salt taste. And um, Include you know inside the recipe like we have so noodle size, it's a it's a very thin um, noodle. So the width right width like 1.3 millimeter is pretty thin, and thickness right that's 1.1 millimeter, and uh, there are some variations um, in this you know it's like even like in the same um, ramen shop chains um, you know like if you go to this shop like you go to this outlet they may have different variations like like for, um, in terms of, like hydration ratio in terms of noodle size in terms of, like even like portion size 
course of size, I'm gonna talk a bit about it like later, but like also like there are many well some variations, but like within like this range. Um, and then like for example, like noodle size, you know, we may have like 1.1, like 1.2 millimeter, 1.3 meter width. And uh, so it's uh yeah, there are a few risks, but like you know, kind of fall within this range. If you're talking about um, tonkotsu noodles, like tonkotsu noodles, um, you know, it's basically that belongs to low hydration ratio noodles. And uh, so, yeah, that's the, um, and um, so noodle size, right? So it's like, this is like, pretend that like, it's, you know, my writing, like drawing like really bad, but like, so that thickness, right? Thickness and width, right? Like 1.1, 1.3. And um, so what we're gonna, we're gonna try to show like this, well, you know, like actual noodle, like later, like, you know, by, you know, like what, which, which, like which side is like thickness, like which side is, you know, uh, width and, um, but like, so, you know, anyway, like, so this, this side, right, this side is where like, you know, is, um, is actually slit, right? Like the cutter. Um, and then so like that, this surface is like pretty rough. And this side, this stuff is like pretty smooth, right? Like, so this is where, um, like, like, you know, boiling water is like coming in, you know, absorbing like boiling water from, and like, you know, hot soup is like, is absorbed like on this uh, surface. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a right, like dimension of the uh, noodle strand. So um, you talked about like the ingredients, right? And a recipe and so now comes the equipment. Um, so um, we have the equipment over there and uh, we're gonna start making noodles in a minute, but like, um, yeah, so roller unit. <laughs> um, so the ticker type of like uh, noodle machine that that's designed to produce ramen noodles has like roller unit, like, you know, with a di diameter of like 163 millimeter and over. Um, you have to have like at least this um, size of roller to be able to like, um, you know, properly press, right, the dough to, you know, process it into like, you know, that dough is gonna be like really dry, really dry, right, like really dry, like which means that it's very hard, right? So we have to have like this big rollers to like press it, like force it, like force this dough into like, you know, sheet of dough. And uh, if you, of course, like you, be, you may be able like, to do it like in a, um, some like pasta machine or something, but like, you know, roller unit, like rollers, like, you know, diameter, like is pretty small, like compared to like, oh, this diameter, right? Um, this roller. So um, it's uh, like over time, like, you know, just, well, the repulsive force, like, you know, from like, you know, um, pressing this dough, like over and over, um, you know, just may break the, the machine, like uh, all of a sudden, right? So, that's why we designed this uh, ramen machine to be like kind of withstand this force right over time. Like so, um, yeah, that's why it's designed um, to you know make these kind of uh, noodles and uh, the mixer unit because um, it's like low hydration ratio noodles and then like you know it's pretty dry and then um, the uh, the dough itself is like kind of lighter than you know like high hydration ratio noodles which contain um, like uh, 20, maybe like 10, 20 percent more, like you know, like uh, hydrate, uh, liquid. Um, so we had to have like this kind of like mixer to be able like hydrate, like and mix it, like you know, agitate. And um, co well, um, in comparison, right? Like we have this kind of mixer, right? Like that's for like soba machine. I mean soba noodles, soba noodles, which is like high hydration ratio and. Uh, so it's kind of like a bit like kind of bread mixer, but um, you know, if we mix the uh, low hydration ratio noodles, like, you know, it doesn't mix well. So it's, uh, yeah, that's why we, you know, we have a mixer in it, like that's like with this uh, kind of you know, mixing blade. So um, that's some equipment that, equipment part that, you know, you gonna see in the middle, like, you know, we, we call our Rami machine like Richmond machine and um, yeah so let's um, first let's uh, um, check the actual ingredients, ingredients we have be prepared 
So uh, this is the flour, right? We uh, prepared, like, you know, we talked about, like, so the protein content is important, like 11 to 12%. And um, so these are the, all the solid ingredients. And so this is a gluten and this is a white powder. And this is the well, this is water and salt and consume. So, so solid and liquid ingredients. So, um, so we're gonna turn these ingredients into noodles. So solids, my right? solids, go in there, and you're gonna put and dump it into the mixer. So this is a rich man one, it's in a one machine. So that means like there's a rich man two, a rich man three, but like there's no rich man four, um, there's rich man gold, and there's like rich man king, um, rich man two gold or something. So like, but like it's called rich, 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 rich man. Uh, yeah, machine. Um, so, you know, you have to make sure that you can you dissolve like all the you know cancy and salt into the water and you're basically making this solution like just make sure that it's like they're all like dissolved in there and then um you know, thoroughly before um, you add this solution to the flour and so what we are doing right now is that, like, we are just actually like, mixing just uh, solid ingredients by itself, by themselves, and um, you know, just trying to make sure that, like, they all mixed up well, and then um, you know, before we add the liquid. So first, um, we add we add about like two third, two third of liquid right first, and then you know, can mix it mix it for like four four minutes first and then I think you may like notice that like all this like liquid is like dripping through the holes right just a little by little um, to you know render like good hydration the dough and um, yeah we're gonna go through the uh, all the each of the process like later like in the whiteboard but like so this mixing process um, is um, you know it's, it's actually long. Um, it's like the actual longest um, for um, I mean compared to like other types of like ramen noodles and low hydration ratio noodles. Um, the mixing time is like it's 15 minutes. And um, this this rule is that like the lower the hydration, uh, the longer you have to mix. It's like the flour like in the solid ingredients have like you no know, less water, less liquid to work with. So it needs more time, longer time to, um, you know, like develop like gluten structure in there and then, you know, like, you know, have like good hydration going on. So, um, but, you know, we don't want to waste your 15 minutes of time. So, um, so make me like just um, prepare like this dough in advance. That's, that's pretty smart. and. Um, so I think you maybe like notice like how dry this dough is. It's pretty dry. Like it's just like it's almost like powder. Like it's almost like powdery still because it's just 28% uh, hydration ratio, like 28% to the you know weight of the flour, total solid, right? So that's that's pretty dry. And so we're gonna feed this dough into the roller, right? And then. Just make make like rough sheet of dough, rough sheet of dough, and um, so to make this rough sheet of dough, like it actually, this machine actually uses um, the highest like, well, it's an electric machine, and um, you know it needs like electricity to run it right, run the machine right, but like um, it uses the probably like highest um, amount of like electricity like when you when it's doing this rough forming process like we call um 
because like the first this is the first like sheeting process and then uh, you know like turning this like dry dough into sheet of dough right and that's it takes a lot of takes a lot of pressure like it takes a lot of like pressing uh, force right so um, uses a lot of needs to use a lot of electricity to be able to like, do that. So now it's like it's making a sheet of paper, I mean sheet of like dough, right? And then um, um, because it's a dry noodle like and it's almost powdery. So it's one like one of like one of the important things like we have to remember here is that like we have to well, you know, this machine has like a two, uh, one set of rollers, right? Like two rollers, right? And then, um, you know, pressing the dough, right, between these rollers um, to make sheet of dough. And um, yeah, we have to make this clearance, like clearance between these rollers, um, pretty pretty narrow. Like, so I, for, um, you know, um, yeah, we got we got a question like, is it possible to buy like country overseas? Um, yes, like it depends, depends on where you are. Um, so like if you're if you're here like in Europe, right? Like you know we know a couple of suppliers uh, where you can buy a country from. Um, then you know if it's a uh, United States, um, yes we know. Uh, Yes. Uh, what kind of salt is better to use? Um, so we usually use um, usually use the uh, the salt with like a lot of minerals. So like um, it's a uh, you know it's like salt that that's like high in like just um, the so, so, the sodium like is not really good. Like so like any any kind of salt like that has like high minerals. Um, Sun dry salt like um, um so that that's just like because the reason we use salt is to add taste right taste right taste of salt uh, to the noodles even though like you know when we cook the noodles um, the most of the salt like actually you know melts into the cooking water um, but but you know still well still has like the noodles like cooked noodles still have like um, like 15 percent of like what you added what you added right so um you know that the taste matters so um you don't want to what are we putting um salt that you know that just that doesn't have like you know good good i mean so the minerals right minerals are high minerals um uh, okay another from the same person. Um, we'll call him uh, potassium. Um, more, more potassium. More potassium would be better. And um, like types of mineral, like we are talking about. Like so, um, if you if you like look at that, like maybe like nutrition facts, like in uh, um, you know some brands of like sun dried salt. Um, um yeah like i can't i can't think of that type of salt like um brand of salt like uh, top of my head but like um any any kind of like um you know salt that has like high minerals then yeah that's uh that's uh, that's worth testing and so we're now like after like rough forming process like you're doing this um combining process so this process basically, um, you know, like makes the dough uh, firm because after the rough forming process, like the dough itself, like is still very, very fragile. Like you can just like easily like, tear it out, right? But, you know, by doing this process, um, you're making uh, great like gluten texture and develop like, um, develop like, you know, good um, gluten texture inside. And at the same time, you're making it stronger. And basically, that's really, I mean, good for, um, yeah, texture. And so, um, you know, combining them, right? Combining through the rollers. And so, before, right? 
before um, before this combined process, like the, the roller gap was like uh, set to one millimeter, and so each sheet, right? Like we separate it into like two separate sheets, and um, so each sheet is like now like one millimeter in thickness, and uh, like we are combining these two. Uh, so like one millimeter plus one millimeter, like so two, you know, that's like equivalent to like two millimeter, um, you know, thickness, right? That's going to the roller. And um, so we have to, yeah, so that, that's that's that. And then like actually the roller gap right, right now um, is 1.5 millimeter, um, you know, and um, the reason for that is that like we have to, we, we, we don't want to like thin it, you know, too drastically. Um, we don't want to like, well, apply like, you know, too, um, too strong pressure at the time um, because that, that would like damage the uh, gluten structure, the, the developing side of the dough. So, and that would ruin the noodle texture. Um, so we usually apply this rule like 30% reduction rule so at each round of like sheeting, like we, you know, we use that um, roller gap by 30% each time. So two millimeter thickness, right? 30% um, reduction. So that that's like that's roughly 1.5. And um, so this combining process um, is usually done twice. And uh, just to make sure that like you know, all the uh, gluten structures like being developed like well enough, and then um, you know that the dough itself like firm enough. So you should, we do it like twice. And that was like 1.5, right? 1.5 millimeter we set on the roll gap, and at, right, and then so that's 1.5, 1.5. 1.5 plus 1.5, that's three millimeter. It's like, actually the dough that's going in, like, you know, it's actually three millimeter in thickness and um, it'll come in now, right? So like three millimeter and then again, um, you know, applying this rule of 30% reduction, um, three times 0.3 um, and then, you know, three, uh, sorry, three, yeah three times like 0.3, like that 0.9. So that's the oh, thickness like we subtract from like three millimeter and that's 2.1, but like um, just make it simple. Um, we set that roll gap up to two millimeter. Oh. Okay, um, yeah, the same person like commented, um, yeah, so the quality of like, so, oh, okay, so you're, you're in Europe, so yeah, uh, so answering the question, like, you know, like, is it possible to buy currency overseas? Yes, um, yes, there are uh, suppliers, um, you know, I know like in Germany and uh, the Netherlands, so if you want to know, like, contact info of these suppliers, like, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm uh, I'd be more than happy to. Um, send it to you. So that was the second mining process. And so now, like, we only had to do is just thin it. Thin it, just like keep thinning it to the final thickness until um, we can cut it to with the cutter. Again, applying the 30% reduction rule, like uh, the roll gap is set to 1.5 millimeter, and so 
Yeah, and then um, so this machine can has the um, like the speed, um, roll speed. Well, like well, you, it has like a function that like you can change the uh, speed of like roller like sheeting, and um, you know you can go faster, slower, uh, depending on like where you know where you are in the process. And so like it's very easy like just uh, it's a volume and then you can just like go slow, faster, and so she's um, so she measured the thickness thickness of the dough and it's like 2.1 millimeter like after it's gone through like 1.5 millimeter of like uh, you know roller gap and um, so there's a 0.6 millimeter difference between like, actual thickness and the roller gap that we set and the reason for that is that like um, you know it's, it's always that like because it's wheat flour I mean wheat dough and um, it's always like it always expands back like and after it's gone through the roller gap um, the moment it's uh, 1.5 but like after it's gone through like it com comes out it just bounces back right so um, basically the harder the more you know it bounces back so the, the harder the bigger the difference so um, yeah it kind of makes sense right so um, so one point like so there's a there's a like 0 0.6 millimeter difference between um, so this is important when you are like adjusting the final thickness like because the thickness you are adjusting with the wall like gap right so you know to get that size right you need to know um, you know the difference between like how much it expands how much it bounces back And and um, uh, yeah, so like this is the duster, like automatic duster. Even though like we don't really need to use dusting in this uh, type of noodle because it's you know too dry, like too dry not to like uh, stick together. But um, just wanted to show you. Um, so like that's one point uh, five. Ish. So after it's going to like 1.0 millimeter, so um, we're gonna cut with number 24 cutter, like which is like 1.3 millimeter in width, and um, the ideal thickness for 1.3 millimeter width for this type of noodle is like 1.1 millimeter in thickness. So there's a 0.5 discrepancy right like between like actual and well gap so you know we expect that to expand by like 0.5 so to get to 1.1 right as a final thickness um you know we, we just set that roller gap to like 0 0.6 0 0.6 right 0 0.6 and then it expands by 0 0.5 so comes to 1.1 so this is the cutter and um yeah, it's 1.1 millimeter in width. It's so like each roof is 1.1 millimeter in width. It's very, very thin. It's a very, very thin. It's a it's probably thinnest, one of the thinnest that uh, you can do, um, like in ramen noodles. And so we're Connecting the uh, conveyor and we're getting the conveyor connected, right? And the mounting the duster and and I I, I kind of talked about briefly about the uh, the portion size like serving size of um, this type of noodles and then you know because it's very thin noodle so that means that it, you know even though like you put like all this stuff like you know egg white and everything like you know it still gets it, the noodles like get soggy fast um you know and uh, so the um the portion size like serving size of uh, this type of noodle is like uh, it's, it's very small, 
it's very small on purpose. And um, um, the portion size can be adjusted by you know changing the length of the noodles, and you know you can make it shorter to um, yeah to make smaller portion size, and longer to you know have like you know bigger portion size, right? Um, but this type of noodle um, is um, relatively short and um, portion size like range from like maybe 80 grams per portion to probably um, maybe like it's, it's pretty big like 110 grams per portion. Um, that's like 2.8 ounce to like 3.9 ounce. Um, it's it's a there's a reason for that because you know like um, rami shells like just they get soggy fast, like they get soft fast in hot soup. So, um, you know, but like the ramen shops, like, want customers to enjoy the texture, like this unique texture while they're, like, while it's still there, like in hot soup. So, um, you know, they want to, want their customers to, like, you know, eat up the noodles, like, as fast as possible um, while the texture is still there. And so that's 178 proportion right so yeah that's in the range that's in the range and um, so yeah but like some ramen shops like you know they the portion size like even like 90 grams like even 80 grams um, yeah and then after like customers like finish up the noodles right like they encourage you know, customer like the ramen shop like encourages the customer to, well, um, you know, have like another portion of uh, noodles, uh, in the same um, soup. Yeah, like they, they call it like kaidama, and um, yeah, that's like kind of typical uh, practice that they have like in the uh, um, yeah tonkotsu, some like specialty shop. So, and then another thing is that, like, this type of noodle is straight. Um, there's no curly noodles. Um, basically, it's because um, um, they, like, if you want to, like, make them curly, right, like, you know, kind of, like, by rubbing them or, like, you know, trying to, trying to cull them, because um, they, it's a dry, uh, hard, right, because low hydration, um, they, they may break, right? They may break, like, if you, like, want to, like, cull them. And um, so, yeah, basically they are straight noodles. So, um, so just you know, like cutting, portioning, and uh, after that, like you just, um, yeah, store them, store them in the fridge, um, you know, till you serve them. And um, if you, so like, if you if you want to do the like aging, like resting, like while you're storing like you know in the storage um yeah i saw them like so like um the the temperature right like store store temperature storing temperature like an appropriate um temperature would be like 15 degrees celsius sorry so like um we're not one out of instinct, like, you know, what well, I'm talking about, like, uh, the guy doing camera, like, is not <laughs> synced with that. What I'm talking about, like, you know, to, like, just just um, uh, summarizing, like, it. so, uh, so first, like, we have to weigh, right? This, you saw, you guys saw, like, you know, ingredients that are, like, already weighed, right? But, like, this is the most important process. Because if you screw this up, like, you know, any of, like, you know, measuring um, up, right, then, you know, the rest of the process like wouldn't matter like like because um then you have to measure everything by weight okay i mean if you you know try to measure like by like in a volume like or like just you know by looking at it, like visually then you know it's not like every time you make like you try to make like same thing you know it's not consistent so measure everything by weight uh, so mixing, um, so basically hydration, like so that's 15 minutes, and you do resting process. Resting process, like um, so, you know, you, you guys saw that the the dough like in a plastic bag, right? Uh, so 30 minutes. Uh, so that's how you rest it. And rough forming, like so, we start like 
the um, the royal gap like from like one millimeter, and we did the first second combining, and then thinning to um, yeah the, to the final thickness like 1.1 millimeter, and then cutting uh, like 1.3 in width, and portioning right. So by like adjusting the length, like around 100 grams per portion, and storing like a position like 15 degrees Celsius. Like if you want to rest it, uh, resting means like um, the noodles like are you know drying up, like you know kind of losing moisture, and then um, kind of like um, yeah, um, the color is like turning like kind of translucent, right? And then so that noodle tissue like tighter. So that's that's happening like. You know, around like 15 degrees Celsius. But like if you just wanna, you just don't want to rest like age it. Um, you know, just lower it, right? Lower or temperature, like 10 degrees Celsius, like you know, about like five, would be fine. But like not enough, you know, freezing temperature. But um, so that's the kind of ideal temperature. Okay, so that's um, yeah. Then another thing. Um, so so we have like. Different, different cutters. So this is like 1.1 millimeter in width, and this is like 1.2. And then the one we use is 1.3 millimeter. It's just like 0.1 millimeter differences, right? But like it's well, like when you um, bite into these noodles, like the, you know, it, it's a it's a big difference. So. Um, yeah, but like it's the range, right? It's the range. So it's like what like customers would expect from you know this type of noodle, the size and the texture, and uh, like it's kind of like you know what the like the ramen shops like serving these type of noodles like expect, you know. Uh, so like, but the expectations like fall within this like kind of small range, um, the noodle size, the hydration ratio, and uh, the portion size as well. So um, yeah, so this is the tonkotsu noodles, um, hydro hydration noodles, and uh, it's the uh, most iconic um, ramen noodles in the world. And then, uh, so now you guys know how you can make it from scratch. All right, guys. So that's um, about what we had and uh, sorry we went over like about like 10 minutes, 15 minutes uh, and like 30 minute uh, promise I made. But um, tomorrow morning uh, in Japan time uh, from 9.30 we have uh, another class on uh, Tsukemen noodles. For those of you who are interested in, uh, please uh, sign up from the website today. So, and if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to our channel and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, so I uh, hope to see you guys in the next class. So thank you so much for enjoying uh, attending. Um, then before we go, we had another question. OK, so how does aging work with noodles? Makes it better? How long do you need to age it? Um, so yeah. So, there, there are like three, uh, three different aging, three different resting processes, like in ramen noodles. So like first, like after mixing, after mixing. Um, so basically, um, you know, we're trying to uh, develop wooden structure. But like after uh, mixing, you know, like there's like a lot of like internal stress, right? Like so, this resting process like releases this internal process like for um, good uh, gluten structure development. And you know another benefit is like degassing, like there are a lot of like air pockets in the dough, and the resting like helps release these air pockets from the dough. Like so, when you um, when you cook the noodles, right? Like there are a lot of air pockets, and like you know they, the noodles float, right? And then that may like some of them like burst actually, like you know during the uh, cooking. So that that's really not good. So um, and. Uh, yeah, um, the, basically the final um, aging process, like we talked about, like just storing the noodles, fresh noodles in the refrigerator, um, basically like you know helps lose the moisture of the noodles and a bit like makes like kind of noodle texture like tighter, and um, the color be like kind of more like translucent, and um, so basically 
better uh, neural texture. Yeah, um, he, we have a uh, um, blog uh, called like Noodle Master Lab, like on our website, and there's a article. There are articles like talking about you know this aging resting pro um, process um, benefits, like how it works and stuff, like you know like in details. So if you are more, I mean, if you are interested in knowing more about it, like just um, check out our articles, um, the Noodle Master Lab and uh, yamatonoodle.com. So, thank you. Uh, your question? All right, so that's it. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, I'll see you guys in the next class. So, thank you so much. Bye-bye.